together for our call to worship and sing along together. Revive us again. concerned about our world, concerned about even our state, that we make sure that our state's lifted high in every way, form, and fashion. Just want to thank each other for being here today so that we can worship together as a group and praise the Lord God Almighty for the great wonderful things he's done. Let's continue with our singing at the cross, at the cross, in that service.
Amen. I don't know what's hard to do with the math and singing. If you talk to the Lord, you ain't talking to me. Amen. Please be seated as Brother Kerry comes forward. Tell us about our opportunities in ministry as well as our morning announcements. Good to see everyone here today. I hope you've had a, a decent week. I know we got a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now, uh, but it's it's nice to have a place we can come be together and kind of get some comfort and some love and some hope in each other. Amen. Amen. Uh, a few announcements real quick this week. One, uh, I said this last week, but just to reiterate, there's no Father's Day breakfast this year. Uh, so we just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. No Father's Day breakfast. Uh, Basically, right now, all of our youth events, so camps and hearts on fire and all that kind of stuff are canceled right now. We're going to make some plans to do some different stuff. We just don't have those plans made yet because, quite frankly, we're not sure what we can do at this point. So once we get all that figured out, we'll have some stuff going on. Just be ready for those announcements uh, and scheduling for that. Finally, the biggest announcement I have for today, next week, so June 7th, after the second service, so not this service, but after the next service, we will have a special called business meeting for the purposes of electing the nominating committee for next church year. So if you want to be a part of that vote, you'll either need to just come to the next service or come to this service, go home and hang out for a little while. You could watch the Sunday school video I make every week and then come back about 11.30 for that business meeting but just make it it really affects you all more than it does the next service so if you want to be a part of that just make some plans for next week to be back up here at 11 30 and that's all the announcements that i have for today and i'm gonna be honest, i'm not sure who's supposed to be praying today evidently it's bob <laughs> it's not supposed to be but it is what it is right now um, I am allowed, according to Knox County, to speak to you without the mask on. I'll put it right back up when I'm done. But this morning, we're going to have a prayer at the very end of this. But I want us to do something. Psalm 95, 6, the psalmist declares, Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God our maker we come together today to worship the Lord that's why we're here but hear me just because you show up at a worship service doesn't mean you'll leave having worshiped God the greatest enemy for each of us to truly worship the Lord is ourselves for whatever reason we come into God's house with a lot of things that can distract us from true worship. So I want you to help me out here. I want you to follow along with an exercise I have for you. I ask for your cooperation. So whatever I instruct you, I want you to follow. So the first one's real easy. Just right where you are. You do not have to stand up. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Now, I want you to think of things that can distract you. Things that maybe are distracting you today. Maybe you're thinking about the roast in the oven or the plans for your day after this service this morning. Or maybe you've got that list of things to do this coming week. Or maybe it's who's here this morning, who's not here. I don't know what distracts you. I want you to think of the things that distract you today. Look at those distractions, and here's what I want you to do with them. I want you to imagine setting them beside you. They may be there after this service, but for this service, I want you to set them aside. Next, with your eyes closed, 
I want you to lift your head up. This symbolizes that you're looking up to God. That you're going to focus on Him this morning. I want you to think of what Christ has done for you. Think of the blessings He has given you. Think of His qualities and characters. Ponder His majesty, His power, His justice, His grace, His mercy, His love. Think of those things. Think of who Christ is and focus upon that. With eyes closed. What are you going to give them today? When we gather together, we come to bring the Lord things He requires. We can bring Him today the sacrifice of praise. We can bring Him our focus, our lives. And we are to bring Him our prayer concerns and lay them before our Lord. Whatever it is that you need to bring the Lord today, think of those things. What is it that God wants from you today? And what can you bring? When you have thought of these things, and this is just symbolic, if you're ready to give it to the Lord, symbolically just lift up your hands right where you are, saying, Lord, I give this to you. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker, for He is our God. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you this morning. We are thankful that we worship a God who is with us. You're not a million miles away and not here. It says in your word where two or three are gathered together that you are in our midst. God, you're here today, and we worship you. May nothing distract us this morning from worship. May nothing distract us this morning from our focus upon you. For you are worthy. You are holy. You love us. God, unto you be our glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. together the bold print. Right in the middle of your bold print right there on the back. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor about your body. What you shall put on is not life more important than food and the body more than clothing. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us continue as we sing together. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Also in the middle of your insert, this is your altar page. Stand up, stand up for Jesus.
worship. Singing, Father, I adore you. Got me? Here we go. Jeremiah chapter 17. I really thought it would be romantic. Julie and I were celebrating an anniversary, and we went to a nice resort that I read had some boats, some paddle boats. I thought it'd be nice to get out on the paddle boat on the water with Julie. I thought that sounded romantic. Does it sound romantic to you? It did to me. So we went down to the water, and we saw that this resort had two paddle boats. One was small, adequate, and modest. The other was big, new, and cool looking. I get to choose which one we take out. I chose big and cool over small and adequate. We get about 200 to 250 yards from shore when the boat began to sink water's coming into the boat we had to turn the thing around and with all we were we had to paddle to get to shore now this was not a, a pond this was the Tennessee River okay so we just did barely make it to the shore just a little bit wet when I was picking out the boats I had two choices and I chose the wrong boat. I put my trust in what looked good, but shouldn't be trusted. Trusting things are a part of life. We trust in things in our world all the time. This morning, I would wager that you trusted in a car to get you to this building this morning. You trusted that car to get you here. Some of you trusted your alarm clock or your cell phone to tell you the correct time to get you here this morning. We trust things all the time in this world. But what do we trust with our lives and our very souls? Our world has a lot of things it offers, saying that we should trust with our life and our souls, from false religion to cults to science to whatever is popular in the world. To a worldly lifestyle these things call to us to trust it but hear me today there's only one thing in this world to trust with your life your soul and your eternity the only thing we are to trust in life is Jesus Christ when it comes to our life soul and eternity last week we focused on what Jesus said about foundations. What should we build our life upon? And that's his word. This morning, we will look at who we are to trust. Let's pray. 
Father God, we come before you this morning. We are thankful to be in your house, gathered in your name to worship you. Though it seems this world is burning, raging out of control, you sit on your throne. We can trust you. Father God, I pray that we turn our hearts, our heads, all that we are towards you. That no matter what this world's going through, we know that you know the end from the beginning. That you've got the whole world in your hand. God, speak to us through your word today. God, unto you be our glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our text is Jeremiah 17, and for us to understand this text, we must understand the context. It's written by the prophet Jeremiah, who is a prophet to Judah, as Judah has been subjugated by the empire of Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon has seized Jerusalem, taken captive King Jehoiakim of Judah into captivity, leaving Jehoiakim's uncle Zedekiah as king in his place. Here is Zedekiah's condition to rule from King Nebuchadnezzar, to be a puppet for Nebuchadnezzar. That whatever Babylon wants, Babylon gets in Judah. Judah is to make large payments to Babylon. Basically, Babylon is forcing Judah to be a slave state. King Zedekiah does not want this. He wants to be free. He wants Judah to be free. He has two options in front of him. He can rebel and call for help from the nation of Egypt, another large country to call on them to come to their aid against Babylon and rebel. Or, King Zedekiah can trust the Lord. Trust the Lord to deliver Judah against Babylon. This is the context in which this was written. Chapter 17, verse 5 says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and who makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. It makes clear in the very first portion of this who is speaking. This is God. And he says, Woe to anyone who trusts man. The Hebrew word trust here means confidence, belief, security felt in whom you rely. God says, do not trust. Put confidence in the wrong thing, and the wrong thing is man. The word used here for man is Adam in the Hebrew. We may know it as Adam. It means made of dust. That first Adam was made from dust. And don't kid yourself. Each of us here today, when you boil it down, we're made of dust. Verse 5 again. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Cursed is the one who trusts flesh, who trust in the strength or so-called strength of man. Jeremiah gives a woe to those that are in calamity and do not turn to God but turns to man's solutions, to their own strength. Now in this context, God is condemning those who would trust in Egypt to deliver Judah and not God himself. Verse 6, For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, 
which is not inhabited. God likens those who trust in man to a shrub in the desert. The Hebrew actually says the junipers of the Arabah, which is the desert south of the Dead Sea. Why does this bush shrivel? It doesn't have water. It's been planted in a place where there is not adequate water for that bush to survive. God is saying those who trust in flesh is like a bush in the desert. It doesn't have what it needs for life. It is planted in the wrong place. It is planted in a land of death. God says those who trust in the strength of man will fail, will shrivel. However, God does speak of what we can trust in. Verse 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. God says the one that trusts in God, who puts his confidence, his belief, his trust in God, is like something. Watch. Verse 8. For he shall be like a tree planted by waters, which spread out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaves or leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor cease from yielding fruit. God says that the one who trusts in the Lord is like one planted by water. Water is the source of life to plants. Plants cannot live without water. The one who trusts in God will not have to fear when the heat comes because it has water, because it's planted by a life-giving source. Even in a desert, trees can have leaves that are green if it's planted by water. It can be a drought all around it, but a plant can still bear fruit if it's planted by ever-flowing water. In this context, Jeremiah is saying to Judah, don't trust in Egypt. Trust the Lord. He is the source of life. He is the one that can deliver you. This was written to Judah a specific people at a specific time. Though it was written to them, it was written for us. These truths can help us as individuals to know who to trust, and it can inform this nation we live in what we should be trusting. And it's not flesh, it is the Lord. From this text, I want to point out three truths of those who trust in the Lord. Those who trust in the Lord are, number one, nourished. Nourished. We live in one of the greatest places on planet Earth, my opinion, East Tennessee, at the foothills of the Smoky Mountains. The land we live in is lush. If you could describe it as a color, the color would be green. Just go outside. The trees, the leaves are green. The grass is green. Our bushes are green. Why? Because we have solid rainfall where we live, bringing life to plants and vegetation. But hear me this morning, fellow East Tennessee people. Not all lands are like ours. Last year, I was honored to take a trip to Israel, and we made a visit to the Dead Sea. If there's any place in this world that's been named accurately, it's the Dead Sea, because it's dead. There's no fish swimming in the Dead Sea because there's too much salt. It's just dead. And if you were to look at the land around it, it's dead. If East Tennessee is green, that land is brown. You've got rocks everywhere, cliffs, and then more rocks. If there's any vegetation, it's brown, dying, and barely holding on to life around most of the Dead Sea. However, 
When we visited the Dead Sea, we found one place that was not like that. It had life. If you have your Bible with you, I don't know what your Bible is like, but if you have a Bible that has maps, look to the back and find a map of Israel and look at the Dead Sea. If you were to look at the west coast of the Dead Sea, you may see the name of a place called En Gedi. En Gedi is the place where David hid from Saul in a cave. When we visited the Dead Sea, we visited En Gedi. And this area is teeming with life. The trees are lush. The fauna is green. Life in the middle of the desert. Why? Because at En Gedi, a stream with good water flows through that desert. There is dryness and death all around, but where that stream was, there was life. Water is life in a desert. Now, remember, this was not written in East Tennessee. It was written in a land that understood deserts. Deserts were never far away in Israel. In fact, the junipers of the Arabah is right there on the Dead Sea. But what this teaches is this, where good water flows, even in a desert, you will find life. Because streams of living water is life, even in a desert. If a tree is planted by waters, it will flourish and have life, even if it flows or is planted in the desert. Now, I want to say this. This text is not really about plants, is it? It's about people. God is saying those who trust the Lord is like a plant that has been placed beside a stream of living water. It will have life. Those who trust the Lord can be in the desert area spiritually, but if it's planted by and in God, it will have life. Hear me. Those who trust in the Lord for salvation has eternal life. Jesus says in John 8, 38, of himself, he says, He who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water water it's speaking of eternal life those who trust Jesus has eternal life flowing in them here's a harsh reality due to sin all man is set on a course towards hell and if we die in our sin we are separated from God for eternity in a place called hell due to our sin we have a course of everlasting suffering Ah, but the good news is this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, trusts in him, will have everlasting life. And not perish. Whoever believes upon Jesus receives eternal life. Jesus Christ is an ever-flowing stream of eternal life. And in this world, there is no other stream. Only in Christ Jesus can you find eternal life. If you're here this morning without Christ, know this. On the course that you're on, a separation from God in eternity awaits you. But there's good news. There's a stream of living water, and it has a name, Jesus Christ. Trust Jesus today. But for those in this room who've already trusted Christ, we have trusted Jesus for our eternal life. The question is, are we trusting Him with our everyday life? Are we still holding on to control of our lives, or are we trusting Jesus? I want to say this. Those who trust God with their everyday life, the life that they have on planet Earth till they go home, point number two, those who trust Jesus can rest without fear. They can rest without fear. Let's look at verse 8. 
For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spread out its roots by the river, and will not fear when he comes. But its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. It says that this tree planted by the waters, even in years, seasons of drought, it's not going to fear, it's not going to be anxious. Because it rests in God. God says to us today, even in seasons of calamity, we don't have to be anxious. We don't have to be worried. We can rest in the Lord. A few years back, the provinces uh, flew from Atlanta to Phoenix, Arizona. It was about 7 o'clock at night. We were already on the plane getting ready to taxi down the runway when the pilot speaks over the PA and says, um, this is your captain speaking. Uh, we are going to be delayed. We are having some engine trouble. To make a long story short, they changed out a complete engine on that plane before we took off. And it was delayed many hours. We did not take off until 1.30 in the morning. At 2 in the morning, I was not asleep. Usually at 2 o'clock, I'm already asleep. But when I was on that plane, I was not asleep. You want to know why? Because I couldn't stop thinking. I kept thinking, they just replaced a whole engine on this plane in the dark. Were these guys fully rested? I don't know them. So as we took off, I didn't trust that they just changed the engine on that plane. And as we took off, there was this mechanical smell that I could smell coming through the plane. I'm like, certainly the engine is on fire. That's what I'm smelling, right? So I was just anxious. And the trip from Atlanta to Phoenix was very turbulent. And every time we experienced turbulence, I just knew the engine just fell off. I knew it. For the whole flight, I couldn't sleep. Because I was anxious, worried. I didn't trust the plane I was on. But the joker in front of me, I don't know who he was. He slept the whole flight. The whole flight. He went through the same turbulence that I did. He remained asleep. Why? He rested because he trusted the plane. Christian, if you don't know this already, I, I will enlighten you. During your time on planet Earth, you'll have lots of times of turbulence where life will shake you, where your life will be turned upside down. And life will throw you about. I don't know about you, but when my life is turned upside down, I have a challenge to be anxious and filled with worry. Let's read 8 again. For those who trust the Lord, he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when he comes. But its leaves will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Those who trust in the Lord, no matter what the season of life is, we can rest and be secure not because of us, not because of the season that we're in, but because we can trust whom we've trusted. We can rest in the Lord. We're passing through an odd season of life right now. A season of crisis due to COVID-19. A season of social unrest. A season of racial tensions and riots. All at the same time. But hear me, no matter how much calamity we have in this world our God is an awesome God and we can rest in him because he is worthy of trust point three those who trust the Lord will be fruitful will be fruitful Julie's sister 
and her family live in West Texas. Now, Carrie can know this. You've spent some time in West Texas. For those who haven't, I have one word to describe a West Texas summer. Just one word. Brutal. Is that fair? It's hot. It's hot in West Texas. And we were there one year at its hottest. It was all day long. It was over 100 all day except for one hour before the sun went down. It was in the high 90s, a little bit of a break. And the wind that summer blew hot all the time. And it was sandy. You walk outside, sand was blowing in your face. And they just experienced a year and a half of drought. So there was no cotton out in the fields. The drought was relentless. Death was everywhere as far as the land. The, the grass was brown. However, in Julie's sister's backyard, there was a tomato tree or a tomato bush plant that had fruit on it. It had tomatoes. How? Julie's sister watered it every day. Every day. It produced fruit because it received water in a land without water. I want to read it one more time, last time. Verse 8, For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when he comes, but its leaf will be green. It will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding Hear me this morning. Even in seasons of drought in this world, in years of calamity, those who trust in the Lord should bear fruit, spiritual fruit. Now, I believe there's many types of spiritual fruit, but let's look at one fruit. Galatians 5.22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness and self-control no matter how difficult how turbulent how much calamity how much of a drought there is in this world those beside the living streams of Jesus Christ should bear spiritual fruit so in this season of calamity Christian dig down deep into the only thing you should trust Jesus Christ. He is living water. Trust Him and He will see you through. And my prayer this morning is our nation wakes up and stops trusting in flesh and man-made solutions and turns and trusts in the living God. Three truths to close. Those who trust the Lord, one, will be nourished and will flourish. Two, those who trust the Lord can rest. Three, those who trust in the Lord will bear fruit. I'm going to have the musicians play. Come forward. Again, we are in a season where we cannot have a traditional altar call. But I want everybody just to bow their heads and close their eyes where they are. I want to pray. Father God, we come before you this morning. We're thankful for your word. I'm thankful we can trust in you there is no other source of life on this this planet only you may we dig deep may our roots pull towards trust in you God for anybody here today that's struggling God may they put their trust in you if there's anybody here anxious or worried may they turn God, unto you be our glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's stand. Since we cannot have a conventional altar call, I have a few questions. If you're here today and you've never trusted Jesus, there's not been a point in time where you've trusted Jesus for eternal life, but you hear God speaking to you today.
and you're ready, I'll just ask this to close our eyes while we do this. If you're here today and you want Jesus, just raise your hand where you are. Anyone at all? With heads bowed and eyes closed. If you're here today and you've trusted Jesus for your eternity, but you've been trusting in other things, you've placed some of your trust your reliance upon things of this world and you want to be planted by the living waters you want to say I want to trust the Lord not the world and you want to do that this morning would you just raise your hand right where you are God sees those hands All right. with every head bowed every eye closed if you're here today and you are trusting the Lord you're planted by the waters but if you're honest with yourself the season that we're in scares you. This disease frightens you. The social unrest we have in this country right now frightens you. And you're just going through and this world's being shaken upside down. You're trusting God, but you're struggling with anxiety and worry. And you just want to say, Lord, help me to rest in you. Help me to rest in you when the world seems to be burning down. If that's you this morning, would you raise your hand? God sees those hands. Let's pray again. Father God, we love you. We love you. There's a lot of things we can trust. But this morning, we worship you by declaring we trust in you. We walk away today, leaving this room, knowing that you are secure. And our roots are planted in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As we leave here today, we have our contribution boxes in the back. Um, You can place your offering there but as we leave here today outside the walls of this church it's kind of crazy right now it's kind of crazy but our God is in control leave here trusting him take care and God bless you